talk about. You see, I became involved in voting rights as a child. My parents would take us with them to volunteer. We would go to volunteer in soup kitchens and homeless shelters. But they also took us to juvenile justice facilities where young children were being incarcerated. They would take us to nursing homes. They would take us to jails. They wanted us to see what was happening, but they also wanted us to work our hands towards making it better. Now, we would point out to our parents that we were going to a soup kitchen, but the lights were cut off at home. Or we were doing some volunteer effort and we didn't have running water. And my parents would remind us that having nothing was never an excuse for doing nothing. That was part of their education. But my parents also took us with them every time they went to vote. I'm the second of six children, so we looked like make way for ducklings as we trailed out of the voting booth. But my parents wanted us to see that as important as it was for us to do our part in community, nothing we built would be sustainable if we did not vote in better leaders, if we did not vote for the rights we demanded. They wanted us to understand that we protest in the streets, we protest at the ballot box, and they also taught us to protest in the halls of power. I fight for voting rights because I know that voting rights undergird everything we need, everything we desire, and everything we deserve. And as we head into the summer, we must pay attention not only to what they are trying to do to steal our votes from us, but what we must do to take our power back. You see, I grew up in Mississippi, I came of age in Georgia. I am committed to the South, but I know that voter suppression doesn't just live in the South. We've seen it rear its ugly head in Michigan and in Wisconsin and in Pennsylvania. We know that in Arizona, they are fighting hard to keep the right to vote real. And we have to remember that wherever we are, there will be those who attempt to silence our voices and steal our choices. I don't fight for voting rights because I just enjoy the act of casting a ballot. I fight for voting rights because I deserve the right to demand my future. And we do. We deserve to be able to elect leaders who see us and who will serve us. And we also have the right to remove those from office who refuse to do their job. But we can't do it alone. We have to do the work together and we cannot let up. Because what they're hoping for is that they'll pass these bills in the spring, but by summertime we'll be silent. That voter suppression will just ease into one more bad memory of what happens to the people in America. But we are going to be working hard every single day to keep the pressure on, to keep the attention on, because that's how we keep the progress going. We know progress is hard. We know it is slow. We know sometimes it is overwhelmed by regression. But what we will not allow is for suppression to take away our power. And we need your help. We need your help making sure that we continue to talk about the states that are trying to pass these bills, just like Florida did just yesterday. That we fight against those bills wherever they may be, because those bills are an attempt to silence us and to undermine our citizenship. And that should not stand. But we also have to hold others accountable. We have to talk to the corporations. Those corporations may seem like faraway issues, but those are civic leaders. They are either employers or the people we buy stuff from. And so we've got to keep pressure on our civic leaders, our business leaders, our community leaders. And here are three things we need them to do. One, to keep talking about voter suppression and not allow this to become a partisan issue. I don't fight for Democrats to vote or to stop Republicans from voting. I fight for the right for Americans to vote, especially for black voters, because black voters have for too long been the target of voter suppression, although they have spread their wings wide to try to attack as many people as possible. But we know that if we stop talking about it, they win. So keep the pressure on and encourage every community that you touch to keep talking about voter suppression, keep denouncing these bills, because this isn't about partisanship, this is about citizenship. Number two, we've got to support the organizations doing the good work. We know here in Georgia, voter identification has become part of how they are trying to stop us from participating in absentee ballots. You see, they know that there are more than 200,000 Georgia voters who do not have the requisite ID. No one is arguing that you shouldn't have to prove who you are, but we are demanding that the proof be realistic and not designed for our failure. 
And so we're working with vote writers and other groups to ensure that we try to get as many people the IDs they need because they're not going to outwit us and they're not going to outwork us. So one, we need to keep talking about it. Two, we need to continue working towards it. And three, we need to demand federal action on the For the People Act. Those voting rights provisions will transform this nation. Right now, the quality of your democracy depends on your geography. Your zip code determines whether you get to vote by mail, vote early, and sometimes whether you get to vote at all if you're a returning citizen. But the For the People Act will level the playing field and create a federalized standard so that our citizenship doesn't change, the quality of our citizenship doesn't change based on where we live, that we have a fundamental baseline of what it means to be an American voter. Voting absentee, automatic registration, in-person early voting, no matter where you live, no matter who you plan to vote for. But in addition to stopping these terrible state bills by passing the For the People Act, we've got to block new bills from ever becoming law. And that requires the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. John Lewis lived his life working towards making certain that the right to vote is real. And when the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act of 1965 with their decision in 2013, they didn't say the Voting Rights Act was over. They just said you had to fix it. I'm going to take them at their word. And we need to fight to make certain that every person is protected by the Voting Rights Act wherever voter suppression is real. For the people, the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, together those two acts will change the future of democracy. But they require our interest, they require our intention, and they require our efforts. I am in this to win because I believe that we deserve the future we can create. And that begins with the right to vote. And if we have that right and we make it real, we will get it done. Thank you so much.